We're over here at the Levi Coffin House. Levi Coffin and his wife Catherine moved here in 1826. And this house here was his house. They were wealthy. They were wealthy English Americans who owned the general store and other businesses. And what's interesting about 1826 is um, right around this time, you know, slavery's in full force. But Levi Coffin and his wife, these wealthy English Americans, were considered like the presidents, or the president, Levi was the president of the Underground Railroad. And so this house is like very big for those times and it was furnished very nicely. Almost all the woodwork is the same. The latches on the doors, this is their barn. And so the struggle to end slavery in 1826 has a lot of roots here in Indiana. And so the president of the Underground Railroad, Levi Coffin, and here's Grand Central Station, they called it. It was almost a joke in those days. And so many runaway slaves came through here for freedom and escaping into Canada. Slavery was illegal in Indiana, but it was federally protected to come and get your runaway slaves. So it was illegal. He could have lost his entire business, his livelihood, could have been incarcerated to be involved with this. Hey, JJ. And so in 1826, this was the same year that John Adams, the second president, and Thomas Jefferson, the third president, died on the same day on July 4th. So the guys that you could say were two iconic defenders of American institutions and freedom died the same day this year when Levi settled in here. Furthermore, Frederick Douglass, who was the icon of the civil rights movement, um, the mulatto slave who started a newspaper, he was an abolitionist. Frederick Douglass is probably the chief um, of all civil rights. He was only eight years old. So 1826 is like 10 years after we are done fighting the British. Right, so we can now take a breath and now address social issues like slavery. And it was this was the year Frederick Douglass was still a slave. He was eight years old, and wealthy English Americans are running the Underground Railroad at their own risk and expense because it was their Christian duty. They saw they could not be moderate in this time, well before the Civil War, well before Frederick Douglass had a newspaper. So, it's important history to understand that freedom is an everybody's battle. You don't get to pick if you're going to be in the freedom fight. And here's the barn. So, they said that they would hide the children in mattresses, they would hide the children in the wagons, in the attic. Think of how difficult it would be in the stress trying to hide people for a living on top of your running your business. You think that you would think that the struggle to end abortion today would be pretty simple. You get a bunch of Christians together, you pass a bill of abolition, and it becomes illegal to kill babies. But why is that not the case? Why is that so challenging? Yet people in 1826 who pooped in buckets, right, who had brick walls for insulation, Six fireplaces, they chopped wood all day long to stay warm. How did these people do so much good, risk so much, when yet in today's society we can't even pass a bill of abolition? So, also, Harriet Beecher Stowe has connections to the Levi Coffin family. Um, so this is like a, you could say, a major hub, if not the most well-known hub for the Underground Railroad. Levi Coffin wrote a 700-page book about his experiences and should be a good read. I'll do a quick little trip down here to the cellar. They think the kitchen was down here because 
down here is a natural spring and in the natural spring they think it's possible that Mr. Coffin knew that building the house on the spring would give him water right here in the house and so here's all original brickwork these steps are you know six inches three inches to like 16 inches you have to walk sideways to get through it so there's a quick little history lesson on Levi Coffin quick little American history lesson in 1826 John Quincy Adams was president that's John Adams son so I have a suspicion that he was friendly towards abolition being that John Adams was friendly towards the British from the Boston Massacre. He defended the British troops in the case against the British for the American deaths on that fateful day in Boston. So it's a special place to be. A lot of history is coalesces to this year, 1826. And if we don't teach our children, no one else will.